Hello, my dears. We are here together again. As usual, I hope you are happy and fine. Aren't you? <laughs> okay. So, welcome back to English class. I think in the last class, we discussed um, the poem Shah Tash Mahal and we discussed the ornaments a poet is using to beautify his or her poem. Don't you remember? What was the name, the collective name of that group of ornaments a poet is using? Do you remember? Yes, tell me. What is the name for the ornaments a poet is using to beautify his or her poem? Yes, it is poetic devices poetic devices so today we are going to discuss in detail about some of the poetic devices Tagore has used in his poem Taj Mahal and I think you remember the original poem is Shah Jahan the name of the poem the title of the poem is Shah Jahan and we have learned we have read some lines from that poem, uh, Shah Jahan. Okay, now uh, let's discuss in detail uh, the um, what the poetic devices Tagore has used in the poem. Okay, ready? Listen here. Beautification of poems. They are poetic devices. What are the poetic devices? Don't you remember? Yes, read it one by one. First one, diction. That means words, use of words. Next, rhyming words. Rhyme scheme. Rhythm. Alliteration. Assonance. Refrain. Imagery, figures of speech, symbolism, and illusion. And in his poem, Tagore has used some of these poetic devices. Sure, there is the diction, the use of words, very good words, beautiful words. And there are um, what imagery and figures of speech. So today, we are going to discuss these things. Okay, ready? Shall we start? Yes. So, diction. What do you mean by diction? Diction uh, has two things, two parts. First is the arrangement of words. Look at these lines. Though emeralds, rubies, pearls are all but as the glitter of a rainbow, Tricking out empty air. Really, the sentence is Emerald, rubies, pearls are as the glitter of a rainbow, tricking out empty air. This is the sentence, correct sentence in prose. But listen here how Tagore is used there, these words. Though, though is the first thing. And there is are all. Really, we will say uh, all are, that is. And there is a but. So, uh, this arrangement of words give a new meaning to the poem, to the lines. That is the arrangement of words. So, next one. Choice of words. Beautiful words, sophisticated words. Beautiful and sophisticated words. Look at the word line. The harsh thunder of imperial power would fade into sleep. So beautiful, isn't it? And Tagore is using each and every word with a force, with so much beauty. So that is the first 
pointed device diction okay so let's go for the next one imagery listen here's a line like a sunset crimson splendor when you read this word this line this line can you imagine the sunset with the beautiful colors can you imagine yes sure we can imagine that sky at the time of sunset just close your eyes and imagine that golden color red color orange yellow everything a blend of all these colors just imagine that ningalku nannai varikkan ariyam engil ippo oru paper eduthu ചായങ്ങളൊക്കെ ചേർത്ത് അത് വരച്ചു വെക്കാൻ പറ്റും ഇസിൻ്റെ ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ലിസൺ യെസ് ദിസ് ഈസ് ദ പിക്ചർ ദാറ്റ് വി വിൽ ഇമാജിൻ വെൻ വി റീഡ് ദീസ് ലൈൻസ് ഇസിൻ്റെ യെസ് ലുക്ക് ദിസ് ഈസ് ദ പിക്ചർ ആൻഡ് ദീസ് ആർ ദ ലൈൻ ഓർ വേർഡ്സ് and this is the picture using brush and colors isn't it and what about this this is the picture using words so words also can make pictures isn't it sure they can they can make pictures in our minds i this picture we can see through our eyes and look at this this picture we can see in our mind that is the difference so now look at this picture can you find a line uh, in which this picture comes can you from our uh, from our poem the taj mahal just read the poem post the class and read the poem and you can find out a line corresponding to this picture can you yes do it yes this is the line you know this is the line that the picture when we read this line we will uh, we can imagine that picture picture of the rainbow the glitter of a rainbow so this line also gives a picture in our mind's eye not in our these eyes no no these are the eyes this are <laughs> okay so in our eyes in our mind's eye when we read this uh, lines we can get a picture in our mind's eye so words can create pictures and such pictures are known as what pictures in malayalam there is a very good word vaakmaya chitram vaakmaya chitram word picture and there is one more word that is yes visual image visual images word pictures or visual images please uh, say that words once more word pictures once more yes. visual images once more please visual images okay so can you pick out some other visual images from the poem uh, post the class stop the class and read the poem i think you can find out some visual images from the poem just do it okay this is another visual image can you find out the line from the poem yes what is that line sure 
it is solitary tear. When we read this, that uh, words, we can uh, imagine this picture. A solitary tear, only one tear in one eye, that is. So, what do you mean by visual imagery? Visual imagery is the use of vivid or figurative language to represent objects, actions or ideas. When we say it in a simple language, it is the words that can create pictures in our mind. Words which can create a picture in our mind's eye. That is visual imagery. That's all. Okay, now listen here. from the poem a line that can describe this sound yes in our poem in our poem uh, there is a line which uh, reminds us this sound pause the class and read the poem and find out yes this is the line the harsh thunder don't you remember yes Okay, this is the sound and what is this? The sound using words. Sound using words. So, words can create a particular sound in our mind. A harsh thunder in the kekumbo sherikkim namada manisile kya idi murakkam veru. That is. So, words can make us feel sound that such words are known as hmm, yes auditory images auditory don't you know audio audio what do you mean by audio yes you know audio that is auditory images once more the word auditory images once more, please. Yes. Can you pick out other auditory images from the poem? There is one more auditory image in our poem. Can you pick it out? Yes. <sighs> this is the sound. And can you pick out the line? Yes. Which is the line? A single eternally heaved sigh that is that also is an auditory image so we have learned visual images and auditory images okay now we are going to one minute ah, okay we are going to uh, learn about another poetic device. Are you ready? So we have learned yes we have learned about uh, tell me visual image and auditory image. Once more visual image and auditory image. I think uh, you have marked the visual images and auditory images in our in your textbook. Haven't you? Okay, yes. Now, we are going to discuss another poetic device. Listen here. Yes. Now, read the lines. Imperial power would fade into sleep like a sunset's crimson splinter. Sunset crimson splinter is a visual image. But here, listen. Imperial power would fade into sleep like a sunset's 
crimson splendor. Here are two things. What are they? And you know, I think uh, we have discussed it uh, in the last class. And you know, ah, imperial power and, and what is the next? Yes, sunsets, crimson, splendor. Those two things, imperial power and sunsets, crimson, splendor. And my question is, how can we compare these two things? They are two different things, aren't they? Imperial power and sunsets, splendor, crimson, splendor. Two different things. Then how can we compare? What is the logic in comparing these two things? And I, I hope you know, we have discussed it. Yes, first thing. Imperial power and sunsets crimson splendor are beautiful, attractive, very beautiful, aren't they? Chakravarti da padavina varanyale, nalla attractive aana, beautiful aana. So, sunsets crimson splendor also is beautiful. And second logic, can anyone tell me? Yes, you know. Both of them are momentary. Momentary. What do you mean by momentary? We have used another word. Short lived. Short lived. Momentary. Tell me the word, please. Momentary. Yes. So they are momentary. And both of them do not last long. Momentary. Momentary kill, there is a super, very good Malayalam word. Naimishigam. Naimishigam. Momentary. Short lived. Short lived angle. Uh, do not last long, that is. So, the, there are three logic, or at least two logic, to compare imperial power and sunsets, crimson, splendor. Did you get the idea? Okay. So, what is the word used to compare these two uh, things? Imperial power would fade into sleep like a sunset crimson splendor. What is the word used to compare the, uh, these two things? Yes, like. The word like. Comparing two things using the words like or as. It has a name simile. What is it? Simile. Once more please. It can't be a smile and a kawaii can do them. But it is simile. Or I go to the end. S-I-M-I-L-E. Simile. Tell me once more please. Once more please. <laughs> yes. Simile. Okay, so here uh, Tagore has used simile, the poetic device, simile. Okay, listen, another simile. Emeralds, rubies, pearls are all but as a glitter of a rainbow tricking out empty air. Here is a simile. Why? Why it is a simile? Two things are compared. What are they? Yes, you know. Emerald, rubies, pearls and glitter of a rainbow. They are compared here. And how can we compare these two things? Emerald, rubies, pearls with Glitter of a rainbow. How can? What is the logic in comparing them? Yes, you know. I know you know. <laughs> Why? Listen, what are the uh, logic? First, they are attractive. Wealth and rainbow. Both are attractive and beautiful. Second logic? Yes, both of them are momentary. Naimishigam. Both of them 
do not last long but you may last long nila nilkuga ninda nilkuga they do not last long and next question is what is the word used to uh, compare these two things yes you know as the word as a yes this word as the glitter of a rainbow okay that is why it's a simile so here two things are compared using the word as a yes using the word as here this word as so it's a simile s i m i l e once more please okay what do you mean by simile simile is one of the figures of speech oh another new word adu idu vare kettittilla irikku ningale figures of speech once more please figures of speech simile is a figures figure of speech alangaram ennokke nammale malayalathil parayum simile ennu parayumba adinte upama ennana malayalam parayuga onnine onnode sadrishyam chonnal upameyamad onnine mattondinode sadrishyam endha sadrishyam nu parnjale oru pole aanennu parnjal onnu mattonnu pole aanu ennu parnjal upama onnine onnode sadrishyam chonnal upameyamad pandu ഞങ്ങൾ ടീച്ചർമാർ ടീച്ചറൊക്കെ പഠിക്കുന്ന കാലത്ത് ഈ ഉപമയ്ക്ക് സ്ഥിരം പറയുന്ന ഒരു ഒരു വാചകമുണ്ട് മല്ലവേന്ദ്ര വിളങ്ങുന്നു ചന്ദ്രനെ പോലെ നിന്മുഖം പണ്ടാണ് ഞാൻ പഠിച്ചത് ഞങ്ങളൊക്കെ എട്ടാം ക്ലാസ്സിൽ പഠിക്കുമ്പോൾ മലയാളത്തിൽ മന്നവേന്ദ്ര വിളങ്ങുന്നു ചന്ദ്രനെ പോലെ നിന്മുഖം എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ രാ മന്നവേന്ദ്ര എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ രാജാവ് രാജാവിൻ്റെ മുഖവും ചന്ദ്രനും ഒരുപോലെ സൗന്ദര്യമുള്ളതാണെന്ന് പക്ഷെ ഇന്നിപ്പോൾ നിങ്ങളുടെ മുഖം ചന്ദ്രനെ പോലെയാണെന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ ചിലപ്പോൾ അടി തരും അല്ലേ ചന്ദ്രനിൽ നിറയെ കുന്നും കുഴിയും ഒക്കെയാണെന്ന് ഇപ്പം നമുക്കറിയാം അപ്പൊ ചന്ദ്രനെ പോലെയാണെന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാലും പക്ഷേ നമ്മൾ ഇവിടെ നിന്ന് നോക്കുമ്പോൾ എന്തൊരു മനോഹരമാണ് ചന്ദ്രൻ അല്ലേ ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് വൈ ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ദ കമ്പാരിസൺ ഉപമ ഓക്കെ സോ സിമിലി ഈസ് വൺ ഓഫ് ദ ഫിഗേഴ്സ് ഓഫ് സ്പീച്ച് വാട്ട് മീൻ ബൈ ഫിഗർ ഓഫ് സ്പീച്ച് ഫിഗർ ഓഫ് സ്പീച്ച് മീൻസ് Use of a word or phrase in a non-literal way. Non-literal way. Vakka arthathil allade. To give a rhetorical or vivid effect. Vivid. Very wide. Rhetorical. Uh, what can we say? Rhetorical. Uttaram avisham illa tatra ettoon nannai ariyavunna reedil. Ella varukkum ariyavunna reedil. That is rhetorical. or vivid effect appo vaakine adinde arthathil yathartha vaak arthathil allade ubhayikka chandrane pole ninmukham chandrane porthu kunnum kuriyana nallallo paranjathu adinde bhangiyana paranjathu that is in a non literal way that is simile okay poets use them to make their poems more attractive and meaningful that is the thing അട്രാക്റ്റീവ് മാത്രമല്ല അത് മീനിങ്ഫുൾ ആക്കാനും ഫിഗേഴ്സ് ഓഫ് സ്പീച്ച് ഉപയോഗിക്കുന്നുണ്ട് സിമിലി ഉപയോഗിക്കുന്നുണ്ട് സോ വി ഹാവ് ലേൺ സിമിലി ഓൾസോ ദർ ആർ സോ മെനി അതർ ദർ ആർ സോ മെനി അതർ പോയറ്റിക് ഡിവൈസസ് ഓൾസോ Uh, we will learn it on the go when we uh, learn other poems we learn other poetic devices also okay so what have we learned today three poetic devices visual image auditory image and simile now i am going to give you a work are you ready i know you are very good students very good uh, children and you like to do works don't you <laughs> yes i know you 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 like it listen here here are 
some lines from a very famous poem. The title of the poem is Daffodils. This is Daffodils. And the poem is written by William Wordsworth. William Wordsworth. Once more the name. William Wordsworth. Okay, now I will read the poem. Daffodils. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high over wells, wells and hills. When all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils. Beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. Okay, once more. I want her lonely as a cloud that floats on the high over vales and hills. When all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils. Beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. So this is the poem. A beautiful poem is it, it is. So you can uh, read it. Uh, from um, from the YouTube or from the Google. If you search Google, you can get this the full poem. It's very beautiful. And your work is pick out examples of visual image and simile from that from these lines. Pick out examples for visual image and simile. In these lines, there is a simile and there are visual images. Find them out and write down in your notebook and tell, tell me why it is a visual image and why it is a simile. Okay, so that is your work. And our next class is a Google Meet class and all of you should present your answers in that to face to face class okay so that's all for the time being see you in the class and uh, till then bye bye see you